The nigga big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing. Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Nothing, you know, my dad. Hey, man, she she is Jamaican. So. <laughs> <laughs> Check it, man. We got a very special guest in the house today, man. This guy right here, really, you, if you if you like me, a Pimp C fan, you've been hearing his name ever since the '90s, man. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's real it's real good to have my boy Bobo Luciani in the building. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, man. Man, I appreciate y'all. man, just just uh, appreciate you. Hey. You know what I'm saying? I uh, um, uh, appreciate the legacy, man, and everything that uh, you uh, ushered in, you know, far as uh, the way that you, you know, put yeah. it down back in the days, man. I'll try it. And, uh, and the Dallas thing, man, I've, I've always frequented Dallas and Houston because that's, that's the big city for me, yeah. where I'm from. Yeah. So um, when I look at when I look at what, what you bring to the table, you got some uh, things, some gems hidden that nobody probably even know that you never spoke on. No. Uh, some stuff you probably never will speak on. Never. But at the end of the day, there are some things that we have to enjoy. The legacy of my boy Pimp C, man. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, man? Got to keep it alive. I see exactly. that shirt, man. I like yeah, that. Man, where, they got, exactly. who got that? where you man, get that at? My buddy Red Rum, the Swisher Boys, he, um, he sent me this link yeah. one time on... Um, Facebook, I said, man, I gotta get it. Man, mm. and, and I didn't and, know the people. It was it, it was, was real professional. I ordered, and, and it came. And it arrived. Wow, on time, yeah. on time, I like that. I, rem- I, I, I remember the uh, back when Pimp was living. Them Algiers T-shirts was coming. Yes, that's yes. what I was wearing back then yeah. and selling. I, I actually sold them because mm-hmm. we had this store uh, since uh, oh, 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 07, yeah. oh, 06. So I was selling Algiers. I know Dan, the guy who who uh, they was really dealing with back then. You remember that? Um, Algiers ad that had pimp with the black. Yeah, I, yeah. I got that shirt. Do you? Yeah, he gave yeah, me Yeah, I bet shirt. I had, like I said, I sold all of them. I, I, I got I, the shirt he wore in the ad. Oh, you oh you do? Yes. Wow, that's He gave dope. me a lot of stuff right before he passed. Really? Not, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, but, but I'm you holding did, on to it. Yeah, you holding on to yeah, it. Yeah, that's my stuff. And I don't blame you. I, I would definitely be holding on to it because that's something, to, uh, you know, Really, you know, you you'll never be able to replace those type of things, man. Exactly. Sentimental value or exactly. something on the utmost high. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so just going back a little bit about you um coming up, uh and, and Miss Jamaica usually do this part, but she's uh some kind of busy right now. I, I, don't, see know, I don't know what's going on, but yeah, two it, <laughs> two person team. <laughs> oh yeah, we always yeah, I like here. this. But but the thing I can say is like uh, what we ask is like kind of you from Dallas originally. Oak Cliff. Oh, Cliff. Yes, sir. That's your South hood. Dallas. That's my hood. Wow. Singing Hills. Singing Hills. Singing, swinging Hills, Hills. Texas. Oh, yes, man. So, coming up, how was it over there? Like, as a young boy, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, well, how early, baby, do you want to take him? As far back as you can remember. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was real family oriented over there, you know, just hood, you know, hood store. Go to the hood store, play video games, everybody walking around, you know, doing their thing. It wasn't, you know, it was in you violence know, and stuff. Not really. Everybody was getting along. Oh, but you, okay. Did you come up in single parent home or were you? No, you know, that's, mom and dad together. That's odd that you say that because everybody, pretty much everybody I know, was single you parent. Know, yeah, or either came up, you know, grandparent things like that. My mom and dad were together until my mom passed. So wow. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, that was. How old were you when she passed? I was an adult. My mom just passed 26, 2016. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. You were so you were you were the anomaly in the hood. One of them. There was a few of us, you know. On our street, you know, it was kind of a family oriented street, mm-hmm. but you know, we yes, yeah, there's a lot of people in that in that neighborhood that single parents and all my all my buddies, same thing. So. As a child, did you look at that as a blessing, or you just didn't even? No, you don't think about that. Don't think about. You that. don't think about it until you get to be an adult, then you realize that it's systemic. You know, the black man not being in the household and that type of thing. And you, damn, what's going on? It's like this in Pleasant Grove. It's like that in North Dallas. It's like that in West Dallas. I didn't know it was. But I bet you the friends who didn't have both parents in the household, when they did come over to your house, they look at it right like. Oh, yeah. Is- yeah. My mom used to cook, make candy, and all this type of stuff. She was a cooker. Everybody knew my mom for cooking. So all so, the friends came to your oh, house. Oh, yeah. I was the Kool-Aid house. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the house everybody loved, loved to hang out at. So. Yeah, that was that. Did you have siblings? 
Yeah, I got, you know, I'm the baby of two older sisters. Oh, so you mama's Three boy. Three older sisters, huh? You mama's boy. And the yes. older boy, so it makes it even worse. Yeah, and I got four daughters. Wow. Mm -hmm. Four daughters. I've been no around women. No boys. No boy. Well, I had a little boy, you know. That's, that's, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was going to ask you about that, but not so early on, but I guess I can <laughs> now because you brought it up. Yeah. I wanted to know, because I wanted to know, we was that, that real when I heard yeah. that in the song? Because you don't ever know if something's real or if somebody's rapping yeah. to make something sound or good. how much of it is real. Yeah, because Biggie would say, he when he rapped, he would say that wasn't real. His mom, his mom later on would say that part, he was just rapping, but this part. But this was actually a real event that happened to exactly. you. Exactly. Let me tell you something, since we on two subjects, you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about me and UGK. You know, I was involved with rap way before UGK. Yeah. You know, I, I came up with the uh, the boom bap, the hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the early stages. Yeah. You know? And, you know, it was real about just showing skills, rapping, you know, storytelling and things like that. DJ Ushay, Dr. Rock. That's, that, well, Ushay was my clique. Okay. You know, Uche, Snake. Okay. Snake's like my older brother. I know? just know during that time, these these radio stations and they stuff. They was battling. That's yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. It was a DJ competition back then. Really wasn't too many rappers in Dallas that was doing their thing. But And then once I started hanging with Chad and Bun, I realized these dudes was talking about real life situations. But how did you meet them, though? You can't just ride off into that like that. No, bro, it's a, uh, it's a story. Yeah, how did so Go how ahead, did you, okay, tell it. Okay, well... Like I said, we were doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you heard of the group Nemesis. Yeah, come mm -hmm. on, man. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. one with the eight oh eight to hit hard. Yeah, come my, on, man. That's Stop my brother, playing, Snake, bro. Yeah. I told y'all I love music, bro. You're not oh, gonna yeah. miss me. Yeah, that's Snake, you know. So uh our Hardy Dale party, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. That's when we get down. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that later on yes, in the show. Sir. But um yeah, well, I was living with Snake and we you know we were doing our thing. We had two major labels, I mean two major acts sound to uh profile records in New York. And um which was Nemesis and Ron C. Uh, trendsetter Ron C. Yeah, come on. Like, you know yeah, I know Ron yeah, C. Yeah, yeah. So, Everything you're going to say, I'm because I'm, I'm listening to the mute. The beat. Back then, it was the beat. It was Mag all about bass. Yeah, it's, Magic Snake, Mike. Yeah, Snake was the bass king of the South, really. And then yeah. Mag Magic Mike. Mike, yeah. Mag yeah. yeah. He, he was in Miami. Or Miami. Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, if you had any kind of Rockford Files Gates oh, or yeah, any kind I of Pioneers or anything like that, yeah, you, you tested your... Your yeah. speakers out with that. Yeah, so, two know. points forty five oh, on yeah. two different on yeah. two eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's me. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I what you talking about? Cut the whole back seat out the you car. You know what you talking about? Yeah, when you say um, yeah, yeah. On, yeah. I cut the whole the, all that metal. I got to get rid of all that. Oh yeah, just for the sound. just for the two speakers to sit there. Oh, yeah. I didn't even need a box. People I don't close that money, Carlo. Uh, mm, Trump is over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I told her, she said, well, how long do you think? I said, maybe a while, man. Men we, and their toys. We know. Hey. We come up during the same era. Let me tell you something. I'm thinking about doing it again. Hey, why not? I love music. Man, me too. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not too old. No. To, to enjoy that. So mm -hmm. I got something at the house. Was, yeah, I got a 72 Chevelle SS with the, I got the speakers in there. Oh, yeah, I got a, I got, a got to have it. Got I got to have a little sitting in my driveway, same thing. Something going to hit. Yeah, but I want something else. You want something to go even harder. Yeah. 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 And there's nothing wrong with that. I thought about getting like one of them. Uh, Monte Carlo SS that, that that one that came out with I think it was the eighties with the chrome uh, with the the gray color one yes but that thing was bad oh, the right yeah. yeah with the SS at the bottom yeah yeah oh, yeah. yeah my brother got one too that's a sweet car yeah yeah but I like the gray one he got the maroon one you know the maroon yes. gray and black yeah, and the white and the white one yeah the, and they and I even seen a hatchback one with the with the yeah with the win, window like that's a circle I seen it. I ain't seen that one. <laughs> I seen it. It's in the country, too. You sure they ain't made it like that? No, no, like no, no. Like, it was it, <laughs> they didn't No, no. No, you know how that window come with like a little hump I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but it still got the, it still got the length. It ain't. What, it, was the trunk? It's no, just. You said hatchback. No, it's got the the window. I'm talking about how it, it has it's a curve, curve, but you still got, you you know. Trunk you still, area. Yeah, you still got trunk uh -huh. area. So it, it, it's a nice car. It looks good, but I still want that original one because that one, to me, I want that gray, gray with the, the length and everything, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, uh, man, you took me back, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, so, so so yeah, we were we were doing our thing, and you know we were traveling all over the South, um, and we were kind of partnered up with Rap a Lot. Yeah. So every time we had a show, we included them. Okay. And every time they had a show, peace out. You know, I want to say shout out to Big Chief with Rap a Lot. Yeah, yeah, Big Chief. He, he called Mr. Us. Lee. We're here. Yeah. Was that Night Folia? Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah. You know what? That's how I never met him. You know, I, him? You, you he was here the Night Folia. I was. I was no, in his presence once. Was that yesterday? Tuesday. Yeah, we do right. so much. We be working, man. You serious when you run at night and today? <laughs> <laughs> she, she know how it go with like, me. 
Let me oh, check yeah. the calendar to yeah. make sure. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, yeah. We just be rocking out, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely, man. Uh, so go ahead with it. And um, yeah, so we had befriended. I don't know if you're well. Excuse me. I'm gonna stop saying that. I'm gonna stop saying that. So, go ahead. You remember the convicts? Yeah, yeah. Okay, for so, sure. So we had befriended three, two. Yeah, that's hell my boy. Yeah, that's, that's my that's boy. Them boys went hard. And and uh, Big Mike. Okay, Ooh, so that, that's yeah. I, yeah, I, that boy had a good spot right there. But oh yeah, he went hard. Oh, they, I mean, that early rap a lot. It was so raw. Yeah, I mean, uh, mellow. Yeah, Ooh, that was my boy. Curtis. That was your boy, Curtis. Oh man, went hard. Peace, but, oh. Oh my God! I hate hey, when he died. Man, that was a that man. Melo used to hang so much when we was on the, on the road. That was my guy. Wow, wow. that was my guy, man. man. And then Bushwick, Bushwick taught me how to uh, roll blunts in Kentucky. <laughs> All right, he was the first person showed me how to roll blunts in Kentucky. And um, yeah, so we were on the road. And so I don't know if you remember when I know you heard about this, but Death Row wanted to sign the convicts. Yes, and yes. they were in Los Angeles for okay. a while, and Right around that time, they had gotten the words that Willie D had dropped out of the ghetto boys and they needed Big Mike to fill those shoes. Yeah, yeah. And so I think there was, I don't know if it was in the friction or whatnot. What's up, Big Mike? That's my dog. Oh, anyway. I need uh, to get him on the show. Big Mike uh, Big Mike flew on back to Houston. Well, 3-2 flew to Dallas because he was going to write some things for Big Al on the next up-and-coming Nemesis okay. album. So they said, oh, Bobo, go get 3-2 from the airport. So I go, I had a little Hyundai, 1992 Hyundai. Go pick him up, man. Go pick him up, you Stick know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, the bare minimums back there. <laughs> we broke, you know, we still Yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, man. With the stash in it. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, I go pick 3-2 up from the airport, and he, um, oh, boy, check this out. And he put this cassette in. He said, these little young boys about to be some stars. One with a trigger, two with a... Who yeah. is that? That's me, eh? Yeah. I say that yeah. every week. I, that's the but first one I heard. Songs. It was about three songs. I, that's on the there. first one I heard. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know that. where I heard it just like you and when I heard it. Yeah, yeah. So, right, I would say about two, three months after that, we started hearing it filtrating up in Dallas. You know, it, it, it got on rotation on K104 mm -hmm. and whatnot. And a guy I grew up with from junior high school, I'll tell you about this guy too. This is, whew, I got so many. Yeah, I really you ain't got no tape. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring me back. I got you. You got to bring me back. You. You to bring me back. Anyway, um, him, his name was Ron, and this gentleman named K. Rude. Okay. I know you heard people yeah. speaking about K. Rude. They do one of the livest concerts in Dallas history. It was at Wed and Wild okay. in Arlington, where right above the wave pool, was the stage. Okay. And everybody was in the wave pool in the little inner tubes floating. That was the dance. That was the yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was the crowd. Yeah. And you had Yo Yo. You had um Spice. Oh, that was high. Spice one. That was UGK. High. And there was a couple other people. And, and where it was, you know, they had a little hotel. I can't remember the name of that hotel, but it's still there. It's old now. But they had rented that hotel out for, the, the, for the artists. I'm talking about weed everywhere, drinks everywhere. So I have, I, I met them there. I was around them, excuse me. Mm -hmm. there. You're around them, man. Because that was around town. They were shooting a video for uh, Tell Me Something Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. They, they shot that here in Dallas. Yeah, in I did, yeah, 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 yeah. Them so, boys, I love that video, too. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, what's up, we? You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? He's, in, he, he's one of the dudes that's in that. You remember when they were chasing the dudes and the dude was under this? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weed. Yeah, that's weed. Yeah. <laughs> Bo both them dudes from Singing Hills. Oh, yeah? Yeah, both those dudes are from Singing okay. Hills. Yeah. So so uh, I met them there. So fast forward maybe another month or two, we get a call to uh, say I'm Ron C's hype man. Okay. So I'm on the road with Ron, and we, Ron had just got out of the pen from doing, you know, he had a 20-year bid, and he did two on that 20, and we did um, – the uh, Back on the Street album. Okay. So we on tour with two shorts. On two shorts, so we got about mm. eight dates. I tell you about this tour. This this tour is wild. Yeah. It's supposed to be Too Short, Spice, and Ron C. But it ended up, every city we went to was more and more acts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So by the time we got to the, the first city we went to, we thinking it's just going to be us three. Mm -hmm. And we get there, bro. It's like In Too Deep, Second to None. It's, it's all these people on the show. It's like, oh, my God. 10, 10 acts, you know what I'm saying? So we go, and they say, you know, we, we rehearse for a 15-minute show. So we get there and say, oh, yeah, y'all got five minutes now. Mm. I said, oh, shit, bro, what are we going to do? 
So Ron say, well, well, we're going to go out there and kill it. I said, well, you know, we got this thing where, you know, I'm coming out. You know, it was real productions back then. Yeah. You know, I had this this, this Afro wig. Yeah. You know, a lot of people remember this, this this tour. I had this Afro wig and I had this real chainsaw. And they used to call me Bobo the Psycho back then, right? Wow. And it was all prison theme. Ron came out with his his thing on, you know, his little jumpsuit jump like suit. he's in prison. Mm -hmm, I had mm -hmm. the, He had the blue one. And I had to, actually, he didn't have, he had blue dickies and a blue, just like on the album. Mm -hmm. And then I had the jumpsuit on. But okay. I had, you remember, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to jail and lose there and they White. put you on orange. Or orange. Yeah, you kind of aggravated. Yeah. You was aggravated. Yeah, but everybody wore the, used to wear the white. Used yeah. to wear the white, but the orange was the orange crazy. Was the crazy one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you I had, had the orange on. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? With the prison number. Uh -huh. And so I said, bro, as soon as you come out, as soon as you come through with that first verse, I'm coming with the chainsaw. And when I came with that chainsaw, crowd went berserk. Wow. And we killed that show. So by the time we got to the next city, everybody was talking about, ooh, y'all killed it. So they moved us up in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, not moved us up, moved us back toward the headline. Yeah. And gave us gave more, more time. Gave more time. Okay. So we killed it for three, four more cities. And then when we got to Lafayette, Louisiana, we were in the Cajun Dome. And by that time, so I'm I'm kicking it with Spice. What's up, Spice? What's up to my man, G-Nut? Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, G-Nut and I had really bonded because G-Nut had the, uh, the real endo from Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he and I really so Y'all really, really bonded. <laughs> yeah, we really bonded. Yes, sir. He, oh, he was hustling on the road. I had, the had smartest to. thing I had ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, I said, this poor guy. What? And he's selling it. And it's state red, to state. Ain't trying to hear it. I ain't trying to hear it. Getting it. Getting it. So, I'm, I mean, I mean you know, Go he's, ahead. he's passed away now, so I can I can say you can that. Say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he can't go to jail for that. Well, anyway, we go to uh, we're in the dressing room. For some reason, they gave us this this great big dressing room, and everybody's Hanging in, in our dressing room. room. I'm talking about shorters in our dressing room, spices in our dressing room, and the uh, promoter, of course, is being funny with the money. Mm. Of course, that's and that's everybody's the in there talking about why this dude ain't paying us in there. And we in the Cajun Dome. I don't know if you ever been there. It's packed. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the wall. It's like oh, whatever it hold. It was in there. Yeah, capacity full. To, capacity. <laughs> it's full to capacity. Mm -hmm. That's an inside joke, mm -hmm. man. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. So it's filled to uh, capacity, and here comes pimping bun. First, here comes bun. Bun is real, you know, jovial, you know, kicking it with everybody. I got pictures from that night. I'll show you. Yeah. And um, next thing you know, here comes pimp. Cool. So as really. Ever. Oh, yeah. Pimp, what they had done, they had befriended two girls from Dallas that were strippers. Okay. I'm, you know, KT, I'm, what's up? Let's do my home girls now. But he walked in with them, looking like a pimp, acting like a pimp. And so I said, who is this cat? And he's pissed off about his rooms, pissed off about the money. And I said, damn, this nigga another lover. I didn't like him at first. <laughs> he came in showing his ass. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> We, be, you know, he started talking about, oh, y'all from Dallas, boo, 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 I see y'all, boo, boo, you know, boo, boo. and then after the show, we really kicked it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They, you know, they had a little after party and whatnot, and he told us we just signed the Jive, Whoa. and we're gonna record the album, finish the album mm -hmm. in Dallas. Okay, I said, okay, so when we come, we are gonna holler at you. That's back when Beeples was. Yeah, know, come on, man. So um, they beat me when they got here. Sure enough. And I went to the pay uh, phone. I went to the studio. Uh, you went to the pay phone first, or you had a phone at the house? Yeah, yeah. Well, I had a phone at the time. But I go to the pay on, phone. It was cool at the pay phone. Yeah, quarter. Yeah. <laughs> what you want in? Yeah, we were yeah. cool at the pay phone. Yeah. Man. yeah, it wasn't nothing wrong with it. We had no problem with that. There oh, no. Was, all, no. All, 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 all outside. Everybody see us and they know that we got the people. That's how you show people. them. Like doctors. <laughs> <laughs> My mama said, You think you a doctor? They, they used to give us that rap. That's yeah, the way yeah. they would come out. Don't you think you a doctor? Are you a drug dealer or a doctor? Drug dealer or a doctor. So, pick one. Or a rapper. Or a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, Who beeped you? And then you call him back. A bun. <laughs> bun. Bun, bun called me, and he said, we'll come to the studio. So it's out there at uh, Sound Lab, when Sound okay. Lab was out okay. in uh, Los Colinas. I go out there. We kick it, you know. And I'm, let me tell you something. I was so used to the way Nemesis and Ron C were doing their studio sessions. And it was, you know, Snake was, come on, let's go. We got time. If Time is money. But they was just relaxed and coming going, not worried about it. Oh, I don't feel it today. That's what Pimp came in and said one day. <laughs> I don't feel it today. Cancel the session. Mm. I said, damn, this nigga tripping. <laughs> so, 
That first day, Ron didn't show up. Well, I, I remember that first day I showed up. That's before Blunts. So I rolled like about five fat, fat joints. joints. Yeah. They loved me for it. Yeah. They said, oh, this dude came through with some weed. Oh, yeah. He kicked Kicking it. in. Yeah. Yeah, we kicked it all day. Went back to the, that's when they were standing in the residence inn, when the residence inn was kind of new. And everybody had their own rooms. And, man, we just kicked it, kicked it. And then the next day, I show up again. And by then, man, Chad just, you know, hey, man. You cool. I'm cool. Hey man, oh, when you come to when you come to Port Arthur, I want you to come to Port Arthur. I got my own house. Now imagine an 18 year old kid telling you he got his own house. He got his own house. His own car. And I'm thinking to myself, Bush. Right, and how nigga, old high were you side. at that time? Shh, maybe about 24. Yeah. Okay. About but 24. the 18 year old saying, I got all. I got this. my own house. You can come stay with me. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna do your album for you. Da da. I like your style. So me and him kind of really bonded. Yeah. You know. So we. I don't know what happened to me and Bun. Me and Bun still cool to the day. Like, of I mean, course. We're brothers. But nothing like. You and Pim. Because Chad, yeah. Chad moved to Dallas for a while and stayed with me. Yeah. He stayed with me for about three, three, four months. Yeah. And then when I moved to Port Arthur, when I was the hype man for UGK, you know, I stayed with him for hmm, five to six months. Wow. Until I got my own place out there in Port Arthur. Yeah. But that's how. That's how y'all met. That's how we came about right so, there. So, and I don't want to skip nothing, but I do want to ask you because you brought up your son a while ago when I heard that verse. I didn't know it was a real thing or if it was or not. Yes. I just know he was jamming it. When yeah. he said it, it made I so much sense. That. I want to hear about how it was and was, you know, how he. How, yeah, what happened? Oh, you want to hear what happened? Yeah. Kind of what? How did that happen? All I remember. And how old were you at this time? You was 20 something then. Yeah, I was still about, this was in 1995. Okay, yeah. So, and yeah. would your son be your first child? Yes, he was five. Okay. It just, what it was, I was on the road with UGK, and they, it, we were in between um, Super Tight and Riding Dirty. Okay. And so, I, my mistake was when I moved to Port Arthur, I left my car here. I had car problems. Okay. And so, I'm thinking, I don't need no car down there. You know, because you know, Port Arthur was kind of a small city. And, you know, with them, they say, oh, man, it's way across town. But it'd be 10 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I say across town for us is 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I say I don't really need no ride. Chad will chunk me the keys every time I want to go somewhere, blah, blah, blah. But I shouldn't have never done that. Yeah. Because when the, the show slowed down, I mean, we were doing shows. We'd leave out on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come back Monday or Tuesday and back out on Wednesday again. Wow. And that's that was that was that's our life. Working. So. I ain't need no car. Mm -hmm. But when the show slowed down and they started doing the uh, pre-production on Riding Dirty, yes. I had already gotten me another spot and it was across town. And I was working. I said, I'm going to give me another gig. And I've always worked. I'm, you know, I grew mm -hmm, up like that. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, I had um, a history working at Sears. Mm -hmm. Started here at Red Bear Mall. Yeah. So I go to Sears at the mall out there and see if they'll hire me. They hired me, so I was walking back and forth from, you know, it was about a mile. Yeah, 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 and so, good, good game. And so they got to traveling on me, you know, going to Chicago and stuff, leaving me in town, you know, because the record label wouldn't pay for everybody yeah, yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah, on pre-production. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, shit, man. Guess I moved back to Dallas for a little while. I called Chad. I said, bro, I'm going to move back to Dallas for a little while. When the, Closer to the time when the album comes out, I'll come, come back. Come back, yeah. So... Came back to Dallas. It was uh, my little boy's birthday was in, was in October. Okay. So I celebrated that five-year birthday with him. And, you know, two months later, December the uh, 5th, that's when, that's that, when that happened. Yeah. It I was, was with, he was with his mother or something? Bro, he was at he was at his at his mom's house. Okay. And which was his grandparents' house. Yeah. You know, so it was, I don't know if, a lot of people don't know this, but four children died. Okay, four, four children died. Four, four, four babies, the oldest so one being eight. They were his probably cousins. Cousins. Those stuff? were his cousins, yes. Did, Those were his did cousins. Did they ever find out what happened? Yeah, they. Uh, it was electrical. See, the, the father was a um, con contractor. Okay. A, a damn good one. A good one. And he had added on to, to the, the house. house. Yeah. In the electrical like we room. Added room. Yeah, and, you know, and they had been there for a long time. Yeah. You know, you know, when it was all on the news and everything, they were trying to blame it on Christmas lights. And, and all kind and, of other yeah, stuff. Yeah, but it, it ended up being faulty wiring. Faulty wiring. So the adults yeah. weren't there? Was there any adults yeah. in the house? Yeah, but at the other part of the house. And where, where, where this, how this house was, it was like, you know how it is when you add on to your house. It's, you coming out the back door and boom, you're in another room. Another room. And they had built an upstairs part. So they in that other part of the room upstairs. Wow. And then when the fire broke out in that section of the house, this probably this side of the house don't even know it's on fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying no, to no, play. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but I'm trying, trying to play to it in my mind. Yeah, your mind. Yeah, so, you know, once I got the call, it was already over. Yeah, it was over. You know, I had you just sat down, 
from work when I got that phone call. Wow. And it was a, probably about a 10-minute drive. I drove there, and yeah, it was it Was, fun. It was the mom there at a time when it happened? Yeah, but uh, all I remember them telling me was that the mom's dad was, was trying to get him. He was trying to get to him. He, he got hurt. Trying to get trying, trying to, get to, get to him. him, yeah. The flames prevented him from reaching him. So yeah, yeah he, he, you know, he had scaled the, uh, you know, some outside. Yeah, trying, trying to, to get, get to, to him. him. Yeah, which yeah. is which is quite natural. That yeah. that's what you would do. Me it's and, nothing. It's nothing like seeing four small cats. No, it's no, bro. ain't nobody trying Ooh, to see it. It changed it for life. It so. changed, and I know that had to hit you. And how did how, how did, did you it how did you uh, how did it affect too? The father, because if he was trying to get, it's different. Like. You weren't there, but this person, him, was there trying to get to the kids. And, and let, me, let me explain something to you about this guy. This guy, it's kind of like the same situation with me and my wife. It's, there was an age difference between him and his wife. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he was an older man, but he was still working. Yeah. When I say older, this was like a 70-year-old man. Yeah. Still okay. working. You know, full gray beard and everything. Just cool. You know, just a cool man. And he probably just couldn't get there. Couldn't I'm get pretty there. sure it affected right. him. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, know. Well, yeah, I never talked to him. I never talked yeah. to him about that. that never, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. that's a damn good question. Because yeah. to, when you're there and you're trying to help somebody, especially with kids, yes, you know yes. that that they have to affect that's, you. That's oh, going to yeah. affect you. I, and well, you know, back then nobody was talking about mental health. No, they wasn't. Nobody was talking about mental but health. But they were going through it. Oh yeah. Especially for a man, you know, men supposed to be tough. No, like, yeah. yeah. supposed yeah. to be. You know, we kids. Yeah, I'm in my twenties. How did you? How did you move forward? Well. A lot of stuff. I mean, family. You know, I can remember leaving that scene. Me and the mother, we went over to my parents' house. I called Chad, told him, because he knew him. You know, he knew my whole family, my yeah. mom, everybody. And he, I, I can remember him crying like a baby. Wow. It was, oh. And so, fast forward, you know, funeral's over. You know, we trying to live our life. And I can remember being on Greenville Avenue at Good Eats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, this is the story I tell you, my beeper go off. I'm eating, and the beeper go off. And I see his Chad. I said, I'll call him later. And he beat me again, 911. Yeah, we used to do that. You know, 911 say, call me right now. That's right. right. I get up. I get on the phone. I said, what's up? He said, hey, nigga, listen to this. You know, he's trying to play some music that he's playing in this car. Yeah. And I can hear it. I hear my name, but I couldn't really hear it and yeah, feel it. Yeah. He said, don't worry about a nigga, I'm on the slab on my way to you. So he said, I just left the studio doing this song. Wow. We walked out, we on my way to you. So he came, he and uh, Leroy, Yeah. they drove all the way down to Dallas just to let me hear this song. We went to my apartment, they met me in my apartment. We played that song probably 80 times. Wow. They slept on the floor and on the couch. And got up the very next day and went back to Houston. All he came here for to show you was to song. let me hear that song. Stuff like that got me through it. Come Did on, man. Did you cry when the first time you hear it? Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. I he can saw, imagine. Yeah, it was a trip. The, what he said was so dope. He, it, the way he said it, it was so real. And let me tell you what kind of visionary he is. Leaving the studio, in the car, on the phone, first thing out of his mouth, this the first song on the album. That's how it go. And the album was nowhere near to being completed. He said, this will be the first song on the album. Man, I had Ronnie Spencer here, and he sung that first part. Oh, yeah, I heard yeah, it. Yeah, man. I heard and it. I went down there, what, about a week ago and mm -hmm. hung out with him for New Year's. I never met him. You never met him? I never met him. Because I, if I'd have knew that, I'd have had you here, I definitely would have introduced yeah, y'all. Yeah, because He's a good the, dude, man. Because after, after that, like you say, a lot of stuff as black men and just people, period, back then, you know, you, you deal with stuff. And you don't know you're dealing with something. That's it. You know, I'm just, I'm feeling down. I don't feel like fucking with somebody. Yeah. But, you know, you don't know you're going through a depression. Yeah, that, that's you know, like it. Like I was talking that's to my boy Bilo, you know, about around the time Chad died. Yeah. And the feelings we, he and I were having. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't realize that what we were what going you were through going was a depression. Through. Man. Because when that happened, I have to, look, I, I'm jumping the gun. No, but no, I'm but just no, no, the no, fact no, you, but but, but I'm I'm just saying like like you you brought up Belo when Belo was on here he gave us some dope stories too and he also lived with with uh Pimp C yeah in Atlanta a, in Atlanta yeah, yeah. and and just the stories he told man was just 
enlightening for us, man. Yeah. And I don't know if they ever were told. I know that I don't know how many, I've never seen him in an interview, but he came here and blessed our platform. Oh yeah, man. I watched and that was a dope interview. You know man. I watched that. <laughs> Stop but it. but you, man, like I said, uh when you when when you have to go through something like you went through and then you still able to overcome and you guys yes. uh that would have been a, what at ninety seven, ninety six when he Yeah uh when he dropped yes, that. Yes. Cause it, I'm around, I'm riding, riding yeah. dirty, yeah, riding, riding dirty, dirty. Yeah. yeah. I listened to that uh, that song over and over again. Actually, that that yeah. that song right there, it hit home early on. Yeah, and even pimp, I mean, Bun cried when after Pimp died to that song. You could see it was hurting him. Oh yeah, that one day you hear and then you go on resonates so mm. much with life, and it it just continues to keep going through. Just it's every, chilling. It, it, it's it's pretty much not something that it's t it's timeless. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's timeless. It'll it'll be here forever. There's a video on uh, YouTube of the funeral. Yeah, <sighs> when that song come on, wow, it give it a different different feeling. Yeah, and it's got us carrying the casket. Yeah, <sighs> man, I, I hey man, that that's my boy, man. Like I said, I used to love listening to him. I was hurt when he was locked up. Yeah. You know, uh, let's you. talk about that a little bit because that had to take you by storm. When he got locked up. You want that story? Yeah, I got to have that. Like, that's a core thing, a core moment for me. Yeah. Because I was with him. You know what I'm saying? Kind of closed me off to the music because I cut for him so much. Yeah. Just to, I listened to to UGK. That was my mm -hmm. that was my thing. Uh, I met Bun a couple of times, like I always say, but I never had got to meet him. Never, we went. I don't know if he was with me at the car show. I I seen him perform at the car show, but yeah. I never got to talk with him. Right here in Dallas. Yeah. Oh, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I remember there. that we had the dicky suit on and yeah. coming through walking, just walking that stage. You man. mean right after he got out? Yeah. Yes. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I was happy about that. Yeah, I remember. I yeah, that day. yeah. So how did you, how did that end up happening? What was going on? You can talk about it now. Pimp's no longer with us. As far as how he ended up getting jammed up and all that good stuff. How did he end up getting jammed up? Yeah, oh, when he went to jail. Yeah, when, oh, and, and what and, happened and then, that made him? Yeah, and then I'm gonna what, tell you what he told me. Of course, that's okay. where I wanted from from your standpoint. Okay, this is what he told me. Initially, the, you mean the what, what put him on probation? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is what he told me. He said, "I'm in the mall. I'm in a certain store." Okay. He said, I'm talking to the store associate, okay? And the store shows, you know, he's you know, he's being friendly. He knows who I am. Yeah. You know, everything's cool. So he finishes helping me, and he goes and starts helping two girls. And in his excitement, he says, hey, y'all know who that is over there? That's PMC. And the girls. Of course. Oh, fuck that motherfucker. Wow. I don't fuck mm. by no PMC. And if the Chad I know. Let me tell you something. That high-pitched voice. You ain't going to talk talking. No. And those and, the, and with it being high pitch, he cutting you with every word. Yeah, yeah. And so he rip him up with the, with his words. He leave out the store. And so he said, I go into a different store. And I'm, as I'm in this different store, it's like 15, 20 minutes later. He said, those so same young ladies walk in with three or four guys. So in his mind, they go get some guys to come after him. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm strapped in the mile, Bobo. You know me. You know, so he pull up, show that he's strapped. And as he does it, he says, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done it. Put it down. He said, I start head toward the door. They go tell him all security. He says, by the time, as soon as I hit the door, Bobo, bam, they grab him, hit his head all on the door. You know, they grab him. It's two, like, like two of them. Grab him, hit his head all on the door. They say, hit his head on the cop car, everything. Yeah, because, you know. Hell in it. Yeah, so he go to jail. And this is what I learned. A lot of things I, I learned from that situation. Uh, fast forward, Christmas, Christmas time. So this is, uh, has to be Christmas 2000, 2000, 2001. I'm at my mom's house. I get a phone call. Well, excuse me. No, nah, yeah, I get a phone call because I got a cell phone. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. It's pimp. It's, he's like, bro, you know, my album is already out, right? With the bitch get up off me. He's like, say, man. I won't talk about that too, but. We got a show tonight. Chocolate City, first show UGK has done in four years, first show in Houston in, since I was there. You know, mm -hmm. I said, he said, we need you to open. Wow. I said, when? Right now. <laughs> so I got to go tell my family that I got to go. So I call up all my people. Pop, 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 pop. We hit the road. We go down to Houston. It's, it's a beautiful situation. Come back. Okay, let me tell you, this show is Bobo Luciano opening and the middle fingers. And then it's UGK. Mm -hmm. So then we come back, you know, the next week, mama called me. Yeah. She said, baby, 
um, talked to Chad. We just got this 30 city tour booked. Okay. I said, okay, wow. You know, we're going to pay. We're going to pay you. I ain't going to tell you how much you said we're going to pay you. But it's, it's, it's one thing about one, one it's thing. lucrative. Oh, my God. One thing about Chad and that whole family, UGK family, they were not stingy with the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when when I was the hype man, they paid me like a, like I was out there. Like an yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, like an artist. You know, I had my own room. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have to uh, sleep with the DJ, sleep with the dancers. None of that. None of that. Oh, boy, you got your own room. And this is your money. I'm like, oh, shit. After the show, go in mama room, get the money. So, yeah, we, so so we do this show. She tell us, you know, we're going to do this. 50, so we're going to do 15 shows, get the bread, come back to Houston, and we're going to shoot Look At Me video. I said, oh, wow, that's going to be dope, mama. I said, uh, who's going to shoot it? Boontown. Yeah. Oh, so Boontown living up here. I said, that's going to be wild. I said, well, mama, since the uh, camera's going to be there and everybody going to be in present, it's going to shoot Biscuit or Poppy hey. video at the same time. <laughs> she said, let me call Chad and ask him. She called Chad. She called me right back. He said, that's a pff, genius. So next week, he went to uh, for his court apartment and never came out. Wow. wow. And never came back out. Well, that was a long word. Four years. Yeah, four years later. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and, and I know it did hurt you. Uh, did you, uh, you 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 did take trips down there? Where? To, to no, I never, he told you me never, no, he told me don't come. Okay. He told mm. me I wrote him almost I know I wrote him once a month at least. And mm-hmm. he wrote back. Oh, every yeah. Yeah, I got come on now. Yeah, so I, and every time I said, Boy, let me put some money on your books He wouldn't take it. He wouldn't take it from me at all. Because wow. I got people putting money on my books, but well, I know you're trying to make it. I said, okay, if you need it, let me know. I got it, and that's how it was. So. Wow, that's that, that's dope, man. Uh, that that he understands because I I can relate. Yeah, but, you know, I, I hear a lot of people on you know because I, I watch you, yeah, I follow yeah. you, and, and and people say this, and you've heard this from everybody, and it's true. There was a difference between Chad, and there was a difference between PMC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one of the only people that I. That's know what runs run uh, run. Spencer, Spencer said yeah, that it was different. I'm one of the only people that I, I don't think Chad ever went out for. Him. Really? Yeah. Everybody. You and probably Runny because Runny said the same thing because you all yeah yeah. He, that, that, and I was older. I was that's like what the, it is. I was like that. No, don't do that. Don't do that, bro. Bro, you tripping? Yeah. I was that on his shoulder. You know, and that's why he always liked me around because when he got to tripping, I, man, you tripping, Pim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you tripping. And he'll listen oh, to you. Oh, what? What? That's yeah, dope. it was, it was, it was different. Um, so when you, when you, um, when, when he was down there and he gets ready to come home, you know, I know now this is where the celebration begins, but I know it's hard as y'all go through it. Oh, yeah. Um, Bumpy did a splendid job doing the Free the Pimp C campaign, yeah. man. You didn't know it was that big. Until after it was over, I but knew. Like, I liked it. it. I, I seen it. it. I seen I loved it. it. I seen it. And I, I respected it. He was going of, hard too. He was going hard. He was ripping he was everybody. Hard. Everybody was trying to get him on verses and everything. Everybody else. was getting. And, it. And, but but every time he rip them up. Yeah, the free PMC. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That free PMC was killing them, man. Yeah. The t shirts and everything. It, it was just on point the way he done that. And I always, I always think about that time because that was a time in itself where, and then I felt so bad when pimp passed because I knew it was like a double whammy to burn because he already had went through oh, so much, man. I thought about that as well. You did, did Oh, you? my God, yeah. You, and you can kind of hear it in that next, uh, what is it, not the trilogy, but that two trill album. Yeah. But uh, He wasn't passionate on no, that. No, no. He, he even not, alluded to it on, on that yeah, show. Like, yeah, it was, was tough passionate. on everybody, man. Oh, my and, God. But like I said, for him, the way he was campaigning for it and then to not see it come to fruition. Yeah. Cause he had already, I know no. in his mind, he he could see this big picture happening. You don't know. I had just come back. I was going through a divorce at that time, right? Mm-hmm. And I called him and I said, "Say, I'm going through a divorce." Blah blah blah. He said, "Oh man, why the fuck that bitch." You know, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> come on down here with us, Bobo. Da, 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 da. I said, "Well, man, you know, I gotta. I always used to take my vacations from the car dealership." Um, First week of October because of the fair. Yeah. I always did. Yeah. And he said, come on down. And so he said, I'll, you, you can stay at the uh, my high rise on West Timer. I'll leave the keys for you at the front desk. 
So I went down there. And um, when I got there, he was still there. Come on upstairs. He was still there. So we went to Port Arthur. I stayed in Port Arthur like two, three days. You know, that was an adventure. Wow. You know, yeah, that was an adventure. I got to live, uh, stay, sleep on his couch for two, three days. And Queenie, not Queenie, I'm tripping. No. Hey, Queenie. <laughs> yeah, man, that's bun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shannara. Yeah. Shannara uh, drove me back to Houston. And so that's when I stayed at the high rise. Then I hung out with Bun and Queenie after that. Wow. But it was, uh, that's when he gave me the, uh, the shirt, yeah, a couple of other trinkets yeah. and things like that, and then fast forward to um, Thanksgiving, so that was October, and I can, uh, bro, <laughs> the stuff, bro, let me the ask. stuff that he was telling me and playing for me, and the phone calls he was taking in front of me. This is what he was planning before Drake. He was playing in a, a double CD, okay, half rap, half singing. See, Chad stayed away from that singing yeah. early in 92, yeah. 93, yeah. 94, 94. Yeah. He didn't like that. I heard him say something about his high-pitched voice. He didn't he really did like not it. Like, for some reason, he just didn't like didn't singing. Like yeah. And I remember when he sung, a lot of people didn't know that that was him singing on uh, Having Things. Yeah, and then I when did. I, you know before I the video yeah. came out, and I said, bro, that's... That thing was hard, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... He, he, I don't know why he shied away from that so much, but by that time he had embraced it. He had started to embrace it. Mm -hmm. So he was going to do a song that was going to be produced by Timberland. This is what he's telling me. Okay. Produced by Timberland, him and Justin Timberlake. Hey. Was that going to go to the hemisphere? Man, come on, man. That thing will still be rolling right now. And he told me, he said, Bobo, I want you to quit your job. He said, come on back down here with me. We're about to hit this road. I got a radio show. Cause I, you know, I had that Dirty South Block party. I don't know. We was doing that for eight and a half years, and I had already, because of the divorce and everything that I was going through, I was planning on retiring because I, you know, I had two daughters at that time, so I got to play that. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was on Saturday night from ten to midnight. I'm like, who gonna watch my kid? That's it. You know, so I'm a single father at that time. I'm planning, planning this all out. So, um, he said, I got a radio show, and I never met this gentleman, but he said it's gonna be you. You're gonna control the boys and. PMC and Lil Duvall, and it's gonna be on XM. Hey, wow. I said okay. So he comes down for Thanksgiving. We do the show at um, Blue. Okay. You know we chop it up. We stay together. You know, and he he was supposed to come. You know, stay with me at my house that night. And then he said, "No, nah, uh, some 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 soft so showed up for him. He wanted to stay at yeah. the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so he stayed at the hotel. And um, eight days later. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah, it yeah. Was just after, yeah. So. That that was that, that was crazy. Yeah, and, and, and he and I were. See, Chad was. I did the first interview with him out of jail on the radio. I think I heard that. I listened I to it. I listened to it. Man, we got some classic interviews. The most classic one we, was the one the where he's standing outside by the fence. I'll show you some pictures from that night. Yeah, but we did some interviews, man. Oh. They on uh, YouTube. YouTube, yeah. They on YouTube. Uh, some people recorded and they they uploaded it on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. And he would just call me anytime he wanted to vent, and he'd be like, "Bobo, I want to da 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 da." And he get on. I let him get on the air and just do his thing. He he did that twice before he did the Atlanta interview. Yeah, I heard that and one he too. Had that some is classic. He did one where he really went off on Skip Cheatham. It's on uh. I think I heard the one tonight. I listened to that one yeah. before or earlier today. But yeah. let me ask you about that bitch. Get up off of me, man. How did you guys? Because I, I want to just hear the story on, on, on how he ended up making that song with you or okay. for you. Or, or how did you guys end up doing that? Okay. Um, the gentleman, his name is Ron. Okay. And there you go. Okay. Yeah. The same Ron. Right. That through the uh, concert. Mm -hmm. Wedding Wow. He was um, big. He was a big boy. Yeah, big big boy, and but he was quiet. A lot of people didn't know, it. and I had grew up with him from junior high school on. So mm -hmm. he um, he um, wanted to get into the music industry, and so he said, "Okay, you know." I told him he knew I was my affiliation, and so you know we this is it. You know we we worked out all the details. We worked out all the paperwork. Come on down, Chad. So Chad gets to my house. Ron shows up to give him money for his room. Yeah, right. So we get the money for the room. He don't even come upstairs to meet him. I go downstairs, just get the bread, and we come back up. So we got studio that night. I can remember we were scanning um, Curtis Mayfield's uh, discography, trying to find a sample. Okay. And so he said, oh, I got one. Don't ask me what it was, but because 
too many blunts away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many blunts since then. Yeah. Well, anyway, he just found like a little baseline. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He said, this is the one. He was funny like that. And so I can remember he made that beat at uh, Dub One Studio standing up in about 15 minutes. Wow. And the guy never showed up to come pay him. Run. Never paid for the studio session, never paid for nothing. And so he looked at me and said, well, fuck him, Bubba. You can just have a beat. Oh, I looked at him and I said, I can just have it. He said, yeah. And then I, could just, I sat on that beat for about two years Wow. before we recorded it. Yeah. And the night from all the stuff happening from I Know You Strap, that song? Yeah. We were in the uh, presidential suite at the uh, Anatole when we came up with the hook. What's up, Black? You know, out of Memphis. Okay. You know, female Cut, rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my homegirl. She was she was there, Pimp, me, and DJ Bird. Okay. We in the uh, presidential suite, and we come up with the bitch, get up off me hook, and then we go to the studio the next day, and then that's when I let bullshit down. Wait. Yeah.